There's a global issue. There's laws that are that are clamping down to what's happening on the internet. Is there is there a goal? Uh, a goal of of what of all the censorship? Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote about this recently. Um, so my view of it is that um, so public is the name of our publication. And it was um, we it was named after this book Revolt of the Public um, by Martin Gurry, who ironically, as a former CIA analyst himself. Um, but he wrote this book, which is a brilliant book, um, about how, so in the 20th century, you had sort of the, if if you've read Noam Chomsky's book, Manufacturing, Manufacturing Consent, or watched the documentary, that's sort of like the old model for, um, for government control of the public discourse was through sort of leaning on well-placed editors and reporters and, um, and having sort of an integrated state media apparatus at the elite level. Um, and by having that sort of um, structure of power, they were, the government was able to keep within reasonable reins what was published by the media, by the corporate media. That was back when the corporate media had essentially kind of a monopolistic control over the social discourse. If ABC, NBC, CBS, the New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, etc., we're all on the same page on an issue. Um, uh, we're not kind of dissenting too far from the party line that was would essentially shape the public discourse. That was totally disrupted with the rise of social media, um, both because social media disrupted um, the um, the business model of the corporate media by um, uh, by collapsing its av- advertisement based revenue um, business model, um, which contracted all of those um, legacy media outfit uh, outlets into sort of shadows of the, their former selves, but also because it created kind of a lateral integration of, of news consumers so they could communicate with each other and essentially arrive at their own opinions um, from the bottom up rather than from the top down. And that created 20 years of what the, kind of political establishment experienced as an ongoing crisis in political authority. Um, In a very real, meaningful way, politicians do not have as much power as they used to have. Um, To a large extent, they are kind of followers of the crowd on on online sort of online movements they kind of follow them and then champion them in congress they become kind of influencers themselves rather than actual like brokers of real power and we have like absolute um you know seem seemingly a permanent log jam in congress so legislation meaningful legislation doesn't even get passed or gets passed maybe once every you know five years there's a real meaningful bill that's turned into law um but so that's kind of the status quo. And I believe that the censorship industrial complex is sort of a revolt of the elite where the elite have um, reconfigured their ability to be able to shape, control and shape the public dis- discourse by focusing on the distribution side rather than the news production side. So while they still can't control um, what the news media is producing both because it's not worth it because the news media, the legacy media doesn't have the the authority and the power that it once did. And because there's anybody can essentially produce content, what they can control is, um, is your visibility into it. So they've erected new gatekeepers in the form of these tech executives um, to replace the old gatekeepers who were, you know, your editors and reporters at the New York times and other and producers at the, at the uh, major TV news outlets. Um, So I think that they're erecting that kind of um, this new apparatus of power to be able to shape and control the, the public discourse. That's the end goal. Is there a way back from that? Um, well, yes. Um, I think what we're calling for is transparency. Like, I'm not going to deny that there are, um, that there, that like this, this project of trying to control quote unquote disinformation is entirely in bad faith or entirely, uh, without value because there is, you know, there, there, there are, 
um, violent movements that are shaped online. Actually, the more I dig into this, the more I do come to the arrive at the opinion that this stuff is is like overwhelmingly in bad faith and overwhelmingly without value. But I am prepared to concede that there are some reasons to be able to put some kind of control on this stuff, but it should not be happening in secret behind closed doors. Mm. So like this stuff, to the extent that it's made transparent, two things happen. First of all, you know, regular people have visibility into it, which is important for a functioning democracy. And also it becomes, it puts a, a, a organic sort of natural break on the, um, on the ability and the willingness for those in power to be able to exercise these powers. So first of all, it's tedious. Like if, if this stuff becomes transparent, then first of all, every action you take is a possible, you know, political scandal that you have to deal with. But also like, I think that there should be mechanisms for, for tedious mechanisms for documenting this stuff. There should be paperwork and that stuff should be put on a public website for everybody to see. And if that happens, then you don't get to have the situation that we have now where like the Stanford internet observatory is able to rely on artificial intelligence to flag, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of social media posts at a time, dragnet the stuff up and then send it to DHS or to um, Twitter to take action on. If you have to, you know, have public scrutiny of all those posts and you have to actually justify every single action that you take. So I think by putting, you know, uh, laws that force that kind of transparency and by also defunding these organizations, like I do not think that taxpayers should be shoveling money over to these private sector organizations and NGOs and academic institutions to be to, to, you know, um, essentially monitor and surveil American citizens. Um, so both by cutting off the taxpayer spigot and also putting on trans, um, transparency safeguards, I think that you could um, do a, a great deal of course correction.